Hi, thanks for watching this video where I'm going to talk you through acceptance testing. My name's Nick Dudley and I'm a physicist and I've been working in ultrasound for over 40 years, almost half of that time with a clinical role. I've always had an interest in quality assurance, both of the equipment and the imaging process. Acceptance testing is a pass-fail process for any new scanner or probe or following a probe repair. You should do it as part of the commissioning process, ideally before the equipment is used on any patients. It's good practice to record all the equipment details at this stage, such as the scanner and probe models and serial numbers, and to start building a QA folder with the forms and procedures that you'll need. This is the part in the QA process where you reject any equipment that isn't in new condition, unless it's a used or repaired part where you should reject it if it has any more than cosmetic defects. In a full QA program, you should be checking the measurement accuracy of your scanner with all the probes. So for example, in obstetrics, you need to be checking the B-mode accuracy of linear and circumference measurements. In cardiology, you should be checking the accuracy of B-mode and M-mode measurements. And in any application that uses Doppler velocities, you should be checking the accuracy of those. Now these tests are within the capabilities of clinical staff, but they do need specialised phantoms and they take some time. So it might be more appropriate to get some help from in-house or external experts for these. I'm not going to show you these tests in this video. Without the phantom tests, there are still useful things you can do. The first stage of acceptance testing is a thorough physical inspection, which I've described in another video. If any part of the equipment has a physical defect, you should ask the supplier to remedy it. And if there's anything that's unsafe, you shouldn't use it on patients. Once you're happy with the physical condition of the equipment, you can start looking at function. While you're doing the testing, note any controls that don't work as expected and save any images that might be useful to refer to later. Before looking at image uniformity, it's important to check that the monitor's set up correctly. Remember that scanning is going to be done in a dimly lit room with no light reflections or distractions, so the monitor should be set up under the same sort of conditions. If the scanner is going to be used in an area where you can't control the lighting, like ED or theatres, then you need to set it up as best as possible for those conditions. The monitor brightness and contrast have probably been set up before shipping. You can check by looking at the grayscale bar on the monitor. If you turn the brightness up slightly, you can see if any of the darker bands were missing at the bottom end, and then turn the brightness down again to just see the last band with a black background. At the white end of the scale, you should be able to see the transition between the top two bands. If you can't, maybe you need to adjust the contrast a little bit until you can. Some QA guidelines include an assessment or measurement of acoustic output. It's been shown that TI and MI can be out, but by less than a factor of two. And this is accounted for in safety guidelines. What I found useful is to have a look at the TI and MI displayed for typical clinical settings and make sure that these are within guidelines. Also, it's good practice not to have output set to maximum. It can be quite possible to get a good image with 50% output rather than 100%. The next task is to look at the uniformity of the in-air reverberation. The process is different for linear, curvilinear probes and phased arrays, so there are separate videos for each of those. Here I'm going to show you the test for linear and curved arrays. It's a fairly simple test, but setup's very important, as clinical settings can mask faults. We're going to use the in-air reverberation to assess uniformity. This is the pattern generated by the ultrasound bouncing back and forth in the lens. So the probe needs to be clean and dry with no gel. First, we need a preset appropriate to the probe. This is a linear array, so let's choose a small parts preset. I'm choosing the highest fundamental frequency as that often shows any non-uniformity best, but I might change that later if another frequency shows non-uniformity better. I'm setting the TGC sliders to their central position, just to keep it simple. I don't want to be making notes of small variations to TGC that I can't reproduce later. Now I'm turning off the controls that might mask non-uniformity, 
like compounding, advanced processing, automatic gain and automatic image optimization that might work against me when I alter other controls. I'm interested in the in-air reverberation, so I'm adjusting the scale to magnify the area without losing the ends of the probe. And I'm turning the gain down so the image isn't saturated and I can see some structure within the reverberation bands. Now I'm moving the focus upwards. This reduces the number of elements firing at one time so we have a better chance of seeing any dead elements. If we see an anomaly, it's worth toggling between the frequencies to find out which one shows it best. Sometimes harmonics will give a very different appearance. If we see any dropouts, we can confirm a dead element with a paperclip or a tool like this. If the tool's placed across the array, because it has a narrow edge, it's in contact with a very small area that could be as small as a single element. The ultrasound reverberates in the tool, giving a comet tail appearance, which dims or disappears as it crosses a dead element. It sometimes helps to wet the lens slightly with water for a smooth sweep. If there's dropout, it's important to check it's not due to the connector. So you can either wiggle the connector or move the connector to another port. If the fault follows the probe, then it's definitely a defect with that probe. If you see the dropout in the in-air image, but not with the paperclip, then that's quite likely to be either a small defect in the lens or a problem with coupling of layers in the acoustic stack, but that's still a fail. This works for conventional probes. Some modern probes have several rows of elements in the array, so they need to be tested in a slightly different way. In-air reverberation is probably only showing us what's happening with the middle rows. Now the scanner only uses the outer rows for deeper imaging, so we need a deep scale and focus for this test. We can find the rows by moving the narrow end of the paperclip across the array, and where the signal changes, that's the gap between the rows. Then we move the paperclip along each row in turn. I find I have to do a few sweeps until I'm confident about whether there's dropout or not. Here are some other examples of rejected probes. The first has a sudden change in reverberation brightness. On an electronic probe tester, there were issues with non-uniform frequency and bandwidth. The second example shows an apparent change in lens thickness along the array. If the variation is more than 5%, it's not acceptable. As you can see, this has an impact on sensitivity and bandwidth. If you don't find any problems, that's great. Put the equipment into use. Over the last five years, we've had a one in six rejection rate for new probes. Some of those have been physical defects, but about 80% have been uniformity issues. If you find problems, then you need to discuss them with the supplier and get them to either remedy them or provide you with some tangible reassurance that they don't affect imaging or safety. Maybe an electronic probe tester report that shows you that sensitivity and bandwidth are normal. To summarise, make a record of your equipment. Give it a thorough physical inspection and check uniformity. If you have the resources, check measurement accuracy. Otherwise, you should try to add this to your QA programme at a later date if you can. Discuss any issues with the supplier and don't accept any equipment that isn't safe.